I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So, um, in our church body, there are uh, a lot of pastors, congregations, who would like to describe themselves as low church, as opposed to high church. We would be described, if they came and visited with us, they would describe us as high church because we use a full liturgy and um, other reasons. What does it matter? Does it really matter whether we do one or the other? They would say, well, you're, you're putting on a show. You're putting on a performance. Is that what we're doing? Not at all. We're not doing that at all. What we're doing is showing awe and respect for Almighty God. What we're doing is showing our humility as sinners before a perfect and holy God who cannot abide sin. What we're doing is demonstrating that we are the creatures and that God is the creator. We think on that as we prepare our hearts and minds or worship.
Greetings to all of you this morning. Welcome to our service here at Trinity Lutheran Church. We follow the order of service as it's printed out for you in your worship folders this morning. And we open with the first hymn listed there. We sing verses 1, 2, and 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord, you are the one true light and our eternal salvation. Therefore, we need not fear. You are the strength of our lives. We shall fear no one. When the unbelievers, our enemies and adversaries come upon us to destroy our faith, they will fail. Praise the Lord.
O King and Father unbegotten, true essence of the Godhead, Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all are all things, who has signed us with the seal of your image, O Comforter, vivifying spirit and power of life, we beseech you not to abandon us because of our sins. O Consoler of our soul, have mercy upon us. Please be seated. Let us give glory to our God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we implore you that the course of this world may be so controlled by your governing power that your church may be allowed to serve you joyfully in godly peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Our Old Testament reading for this Sunday is given to us in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. Then he, that is Elijah, came there to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, Oh, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant and torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And so he said, Go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by. And a great and strong wind was rending the mountains and breaking into pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a gentle blowing. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. The sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you have arrived, you shall anoint Hazael king over Aram. Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint king over Israel. 
And Elisha, the prophet of Shabbat, of Abel Menorah, you shall anoint as your prophet in your place. And it shall come about that the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu, shall put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha, shall put to death. And yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bound down to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there, and he found Elisha, the son of Shavat, while he was plowing with 12 pairs of oxen before him, and he went with the 12th. Elijah passed over to him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again. For what have I done to you? So he returned from following him and took the pair of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the implements of the oxen and gave it to the people and they ate. And he rose and followed Elijah and ministered to him. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 16. I have set the Lord continually before me. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. You will make known to me the path of life, and your presence is fullness of joy. Our epistle is given to us by Paul as he writes to the Galatian congregations. Chapter 5. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, and peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. This too is the word of the Lord. Forgive our sins, O Lord, so that the unbelievers cannot say, What good does their God do them? O God, who sits on the throne judging perfectly, be a refuge for your children in times of trouble. Hallelujah. To honor Christ, we rise for his gospel. Our gospel today is given to us in Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 51. When the days were approaching for Jesus' ascension, he was determined to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead of him, and they went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make arrangements for him. But they did not receive him, because he was traveling toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But as he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. 
And he said to another, follow me. But he said, oh, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, allow the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. And another also said, oh, I will follow you, Lord. But first permit me to say goodbye to those at home. Jesus said to him, no one, after putting his hand to the plow and then looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Here ends the gospel. We confess our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of the day.
God's grace, His mercy, His truth, His peace be multiplied with you, in you, and among you through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Amen. God's word for our study briefly this morning is given to us in our Old Testament reading out of 1 Kings chapter 19, looking especially at these couple of verses. God told Elijah, go and stand forth in the mountain, and behold, the Lord was passing by. And a great strong wind, rendering the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave and behold a voice came to him and said what are you doing here Elijah the Lord sanctify us with your truth your word of Lord alone is truth Amen please be seated and so we are here to talk about Elijah might as well get right to it Elijah was a colorful character in the Bible, no question about that. We had things happen to Elijah, and things Elijah did that nobody else did before or after. Fascinating man, fascinating prophet of God. In a very difficult time, a time when, as Elijah claims here, untruthfully, but he didn't know that, he figured he was the only believer left in the whole country. Tough times, no question about it, when you think you're the only one left. At least, you know, today, we can look around, we can see the people sitting in the pews here with us. Okay, it's not 120 capacity of the room, but it's more than one. <laughs> okay. So, imagine feeling the way Elijah felt when he got to the mountain of God. This is the same mountain of God that Moses was at, same place where Moses saw the burning bush, same place that Moses received the Ten Commandments from God. Same place. Same place that Moses saw the backside of God. You know, God was passing by. That, by the way, is the same phrase used there in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that was used here in the Book of Kings. God passing by. In other words, God passing by to Elijah, the same way he passed by to Moses. Not, not that he could see God's face, because any, if no man could see the face of God and live, right? So he could see the backside kind of, of, of God, and that's about it. So, quite a man, Elijah. And yet, God seemed to have a little bit of a problem with Elijah. Elijah, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Why are you running away from your call, your divine call to serve the people of Israel? I gave you that call. I told you to work Israel. I didn't tell you to run off in the Sinai Desert or off in the Saudi Arabian Desert. I didn't tell you to come, come here to the mountain of God. I didn't tell you to do that. What are you doing? What do I have to do, Elijah, to prove to you that I'm still with you and that you can still do your job? Do I have to put on a show? This is the same God who just recently had destroyed the prophets of Baal. This was the same God who burned up not only the sacrifice of Elijah, but the sacrifice of the prophets of Baal at the same time. This is the same God who gave Elijah the power to kill 650 people. So their blood ran red in the brook. God says, basically, to Elijah, do I have to put on a show? What do I have to do? Entertain you? What do I have to do? Do I have to put on a three-ring circus so that you'll take me seriously? What's the matter with you? Elijah had a problem. Elijah was full of self-pity. Elijah could not get over himself. Elijah took on all the problems of the world as if they were his own. He 
did not leave room for God. You know people like that, don't you? You know people like that who are just consumed? Who look upon the world as a huge giant mess? As though God does not know what he's doing. I, I, I grant you. I grant you when you see children coming down with terminal diseases. When you see old people run over in their golf carts. When you see nations in upheaval. When you see dishonesty and lack of integrity in the highest echelons of our nation and all the other nations of the world, when you see the conspiracies and the foolishness of man, and when you see the people thumbing their nose at God from coast to coast and border to border, yes, I can see where you would feel like Elijah. I can see where you could crawl under a creosote bush, sage bush, or into a cave someplace, pull the cover down over you and say, that's it, I'm done, I'm not going to deal with the world anymore. I understand, totally. But I'm telling you, you are wrong. And God here in this text is telling you, you are wrong. Buck up! Come on! So Elijah had slain the prophets of Baal. Elijah had stood face to face with Ahab and Jezebel. Elijah had survived the drought and the famine. Elijah had been through a lot. And God had preserved him every step of the way with food from ravens by the brook, with the widow at Zarephath, by the oil and the meal that did not run out of the containers that kept full the whole time he was there. Elijah, time and time again, was protected by God throughout his ministry. And yet, here he's hiding from his call. He's hiding from his duty. He's hiding from his responsibility as a believer in a pagan land. My dear Christian friends, let us not be like this mistaken prophet here. Great man though he was, he was wrong here. He was dead wrong here. Let us never be like that. Let us never throw our hands up in hopelessness. Let us never despair that God does not know what he's doing. Even though our friends and maybe our family and others are in all kinds of trouble and travail, our nation is tearing itself to shreds and the world is on the brink of absolute disaster. Please, don't be this way. Look at God's answer to Elijah. Go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And the Lord was passing by. And there was a great and strong wind that rended the mountains and breaking the rocks in pieces. Now, imagine boulders. Imagine boulders the size of this chancel. And wind is so strong that it literally rips them apart. That's how strong that wind is. But the scriptures say here, God was not there. He was not there in that, call it a tornado, call it a hurricane, whatever. You know, those are pretty impressive things. You've got those F4, F5 tornadoes. You've got these big Category 4 and 5 hurricanes. Those are big and impressive things. And the Bible says, nope, God's not in there. You're looking for a big show. He ain't in there. Oh, no. Uh -uh. Nope, not there. And then it says there was an earthquake, and a great earthquake. Earthquakes in this world destroy huge things. Just, uh, earthquakes in this world completely flatten cities like it did in Mexico years ago, like it done in Japan, put nuclear power plants out of business or start tsunamis that wipe out 100,000 people in one fell swoop. And yet, what does it say? Oh, God was not there either. Oh, no. Pretty impressive, pretty big, pretty substantial, pretty big show. God's not there. Oh, no. 
Or and then a big fire, right? We have fires going on, big fires up in Canada, smoke coming down over the whole United States, over on the east side, right? Or other fires, we have fires up in, uh, up in California, burning everything down. We have fires here uh, in our area just the other day, fires to here and there, closing down highways, blocking off uh, this, this roads, all kinds of troubles of various kinds coming on. You know, what does it say? Oh, big impressive show. Oh, yeah. You see flames. You know, you ever got close to one of them big fires? You see, oh, those flames shooting three, four stories up in the air. But God's not there either. God does not need a show. He does not need a three-ring circus. He does not need a, a panorama cinema. He does not need IMAX. Okay? God doesn't need that. And then what does it say? It says the sound of a gentle blowing and a good translation there would be whisper. Whisper. Call Elijah the God whisperer. Better yet, call God the God whisperer. Huh? God was in the whisper. Yeah. And Elijah knew that. Elijah knew that sound. He knew who was talking to him. He knew who was talking to him with that little whisper. And so he took his cloak and he wrapped it around his face because he did not want to see the glory of God. He did not want to be burned alive like Nadab and Abihu. huh? And he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave and the voice came to him for the second time, asking the question again, What are you doing here, Elijah? I did not send you here. I sent you to the people of Israel. Now, again, remember, folks, remember what's going on here. Remember that by this time, uh, Israel had divided in half. There was Judah in the south and Israel in the north. The top ten tribes, Israel, are pagan. They're pagan from coast to coast and border to border. They're more pagan than the United States ever thought of being pagan. They're more pagan than communist China ever thought of being pagan. They're more pagan than the Soviet Union was ever pagan. I mean, they're pagan on top of pagan. They're worshiping Baal like left and right. They're worshiping Moloch. They're sacrificing their children into the burning fires of Moloch. They're doing all kinds. They're worshiping every kind of God you can possibly imagine. And all these gods, of course, are of their own imaginings. All these gods are gods they all make up, right? Just like people today, they look at God's word and they make stuff up. Oh, God's okay with that sin. Oh, God's okay with this sin. Oh, that's not sin at all anymore. That's just the way we are. It's just the way. I'm just being who I am. That's all. Okay? And people make those gods up. That's not God. God doesn't say that. When does God ever say, oh, that's okay the way you are? No. What does God say? Repent. Repent, sinners. Repent and believe in the gospel and you shall be saved. Okay? The gospel of salvation by grace alone through faith. The gospel of Jesus Christ paying for sins. Yeah, sins, your sins. <laughs> All your sins. Exactly. And how, how do we get advantage of that payment? We get advantage of the payment by believing it. Because if you don't believe it, of course, you're going to try and pay it yourself. Imagine appearing before God. Imagine appearing before God and saying, that's okay, I'm going to pay for that sin myself. Or imagine appearing before God and saying, well, that's not a sin. When I told that lie that time, oh, no, no, I had an excuse for that. I, I have a reason for that. I, I, it, it, it's not really a sin. You suppose God's going to put up with that for five seconds? You suppose God's going to just turn his face and say, oh, well, okay, never mind. No. Sin does not damn you, folks. Unbelief, unrepentance, that's what damns. Not, not sin. There's not a single soul in hell right now because of sin. That's a fact. You can take that to the bank. Every soul that's in hell today and will be in soul for eternity, in hell for eternity, is there because of unbelief, because they thumb their nose at God, because they said, God, nah, I don't believe that. I don't believe you said what you said. Yea, hath God said, as Satan said to Eve, huh? That's why people are in hell. Period. So Elijah here had the job of selling that gospel, of, of spreading that gospel in the pagan nation. Of Israel. Every king of Israel, unlike the kings of Judah, we had some good ones down there. We had Jehoshaphat and Josiah uh, and, and Hezekiah and some other good ones. But, but up in the north, in the ten tribes area, there was not one single king who was believer in the Lord. Not one. 
Not one single king who did God's word. Not one single king who got rid of the idols and ensconced again the worship of their one true God. Not one in the entire history of the nation of Israel. Not one. And that's where his gospel was meant to go. That's where he was supposed to serve. He was supposed to serve in enemy territory. He was supposed to serve in a place that was not pleasant to serve in. Just as we are in a world today, folks, you live in a world that is not pleasant to believers in Jesus Christ and him crucified. You live in a world where people make fun of Jesus Christ and him crucified. You live in a world where people make fun of the word of God. You live in a world where people don't want to hear what God has to say. You live in the northern tribes of Israel. Yes, you live among the lost ten tribes. That's where you live in the United States of America. That's a fact, Jack. You can take that to the bank. No two ways about it. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? God says to us, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Why are you hiding? Why do you pull the mountain down over the top of yourself? What he's really saying is, get out there, Elijah, and go back to work. You've got work to do. You've got the gospel to share. You've got an answer to give to people, an answer about the hope that you have within you, as Peter says. You have a reason to exist and a reason to be a believer in this world and in this nation today. My meditation verse up there. If, if the nation will repent, if the nation will turn back, if the nation will accept its sin and say it's sorry for its sin and show that it's sorry for its sin, God will not bring judgment upon that nation. That's what that promise is. Those of you who read my newsletter on Friday know what I'm talking about. If you didn't, please go back and read it. There's extra copies back on the table if you want to get a written copy. Our nation needs to repent. I don't need to go into a long list of what, because otherwise you'd be here for a couple hours. The fact of the matter is, it needs to repent for a lot of things. We need to pray for that repentance so that God does not bring judgment upon us like he brought on Israel so that they became the lost ten tribes. And we're never heard from ever again. They were tossed on the garbage heap of history and disappeared. And do you think that there aren't a whole lot of other empires and a whole lot of other nations, many of which thought themselves as Christian, that aren't that on that same garbage heap? If you do, you'd be wrong. My dear Christian friends, what is our task today as Americans and as believers in Jesus Christ. Our task today is to be a witness. I'm not saying every one of us a prophet like Elijah. I'm not saying every one of us can stand up to kings and presidents and prime ministers. I'm not saying that every one of us can cause droughts and famines. I'm not saying that every one of us is going to be fed miraculously by God. I'm not talking that at all. That's not the case. Those are special people like Elijah. But every one of us is a witness. Every one of us can give testimony in our lives when we climb into our cars on Sunday morning in our finery so that people will say, well, they're not going to the mall. Well, they're not going to the new sports complex. Well, they're not going to the movies. They must be going to church. That's what God calls us to do, folks. And when you go to the restaurant this afternoon or right after lunch, whichever, or even this evening, 
Well, what did you do today? First words out of your mouth? I went to church. Oh, okay. You might then get, oh, which church did you go to? And, and please, don't go, Trinity Lutheran Church. <laughs> you know where that guy, that crazy guy is? You know? Be a witness. Give testimony. Because God does not need a show. God can put on a show if he wants to. But we don't want him to do that. God does not need a show. God has y'all. And that's enough. Amen. Now the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in true faith through Christ Jesus, your Lord. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. O oh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all your loving kindness. We praise you for our creation, our preservation, and our redemption by Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Cause us to show our thanks with our lips and in our lives. Remove our sins from your sight, dear Father, and do not allow them ever to separate us from you. Govern your church throughout the world by your Holy Spirit and keep all Christian congregations in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Defend and guide all those in authority and grant them your wisdom so that they may seek to do your holy will in order that peace and godliness and justice may abide among us. Use our nation to make your gospel known to all in the world. Protect all that travel, rescue any that are in peril and satisfy the proper desires of all your children. Comfort those who are in any way afflicted in mind or body and relieve them according to your wisdom and give them patience in their sufferings. O oh Lord God, your favor is our life. In your presence there is the fullness of peace and joy. Grant, we ask you, such an abiding sense of the reality and glory of the things which are to come in heaven that you have prepared for us so that we might serve you in our world today, both in its pleasure and in its trials and tribulations. And that under the guidance and help of all things, we shall work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Hear us, merciful God, in this our humble prayer, which we offer to you only in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue the top of page 12. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord, our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost are one God and one Lord. And in the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity and substance of majesty co-equal, and therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing.
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Holy Sacrament was not instituted to make provision for a sacrifice for sin. For the sacrifice has already taken place. But to awaken our faith and comfort our consciences when we perceive that through the sacrament, grace and forgiveness of sin are pronounced to us by Christ. Consequently, the Mass is to be used to this end, that the sacrament is administered to those who have need of consolation. So St. Ambrose says, Because I always sin, I ought always take this medicine. Congregation, may now come forward for the Lord's Supper. Take and eat, this is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up unto death, even the death of the cross, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat, this is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sacrificed on Calvary's cross for your sins. This is the blood of your Lord, shed for your redemption. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up unto death, even the death of the cross, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true body of your Lord, given for you on Calvary for your sins.
This is the blood of your Lord and Savior, shed for you and for the remission of all of your sins. Take and drink of the Lord's blood shed for your redemption. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up unto death, even the death of the cross, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the body of your Lord, given up for you on Calvary's cross, for your redemption. This is the blood of your Lord, shed for your sins. Take and eat, this is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the body of your Lord, given up for you, for your redemption. This is Christ's blood shed for your sins. This is the body of your Lord, given up for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is Christ's body, given for you. This is the body of your Lord, given for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat, this is the body of your Lord, given for your redemption. This is the blood of Christ, shed for your sins. Now may this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true and saving faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Depart in God's peace. Amen. Please join now in the Nunc Dimittis. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks unto Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that in your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Please join now in the closing hymn. you find the words to that hymn printed on the blue insert in your worship folder. Please be seated. Once again, a very good morning to all of you. Good to have you here this morning. Hope you're all surviving the uh, heat lately. Continue to pray for that rain and that cloud cover, right? Okay. Uh, There's no fellowship after the service today, being kind of a holiday weekend, but that will resume next Sunday. Uh, Once again, uh, Bible classes are all on hiatus at this time of year. Uh, So we've got, uh, of course, the holiday coming up on Tuesday, Independence Day. Please be safe out there, as they say. Take care. God bless. Thank you, sir. Hey, guy. You do anything Tuesday? No. No? I'm going to go park.